The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 4, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to use structurally sound sentences in a meaningful and functional manner. Learners should be able to use a range of figurative language such as idiom, idiomatic expressions and proverbs with developing appropriateness. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Today we are starting a series of lessons that deals with a very interesting aspect of your English studies, namely the use of figurative language. In our first lesson we will focus on the figurative and literal meaning of words. Now we all use figurative language in a variety of ways every day, and without it our communication would be rather dull. Now let's start by looking at a definition of the term figurative language. Figurative language is words and language that are used to extend their meaning beyond the everyday and create more than just surface meaning. Sometimes it's not easy to grasp what figurative language is or what its function is. The easiest way to understand figurative language is to compare it to something you already do know about, literal language. Literal language is the opposite or antonym of figurative language and is defined as the actual dictionary meaning of words. So, literal language is the most basic meaning of words without any special interpretation. Let me show you what I mean. You can compare literal language to a very basic car. It can take you to your destination, but the journey would not be very pleasurable or exciting. In the same way, you can communicate well with basic language, but if you would like to express intense emotion, or you would like to tell a really exciting or interesting story, you would use more sophisticated language in order to persuade the person you are telling the story to, to listen closely. To illustrate figurative language, we could go back to our car comparison, but add special features such as air conditioning, a great sound system, leather seats, and power steering. I'm sure that you'll agree that traveling in the car will now be a lot more exciting and comfortable. So remember, you would use figurative language to make an idea that you are communicating more interesting and special. Now that you have an idea of how figurative language compares to literal language, we can move on to the outcomes of this lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify figurative language, interpret figurative language, and have a basic understanding of idioms and idiomatic language. For you to be able to identify and interpret figurative language, you would have to understand its two main characteristics. Firstly, Figurative language uses connotations that people associate with certain words to communicate ideas more effectively. Naturally, these connotations would depend on a reader or listener's own experience. For example, if you are a dog lover and have a dog as a pet, the word dog will bring to mind happy images. The connotations that you would associate with the word dog would probably be love and comfort and you would smile to yourself if you heard the word. However, if you had the unfortunate experience of being attacked by a dog, your connotations to the word would probably be fear and horror. Can you see how certain words create mind pictures and how these images can help us to express ourselves in a more powerful way? The second characteristic of figurative language is that it uses comparisons to suggest certain ideas. I'm going to try and illustrate this concept. If we say, Cello broke the mug, we know that the mug is literally in pieces. In the same way, if we say, Cello broke his arm, we know that the bone in the arm is actually broken and from experience we know that it is very painful. But if we were to say, Cello broke Mandy's heart, we know that she was very upset, but that her heart is not really in pieces. 
This last sentence is an example of figurative language. Did you see how in this example, Mandy's heart is compared to an actual broken object? and that the connotations of damage and pain that is associated with the word broken effectively communicates the way Mandy felt. Now let's see if we can identify and interpret the figurative language in another example. His bark is worse than his bite. He grumbles but is not really angry. Which one of these is an example of figurative language? Before we look at this example, let's quickly recap what we've learned so far. Figurative language is words and language that are used to extend their meaning beyond the everyday and create more than surface meaning. Now we will look at our example again. If we look at this sentence, his bark is worse than his bite, I'm sure you realize that a person does not really bark but is in this context being compared to a dog. This is an example of figurative language. The second sentence, he grumbles but is not really angry, means exactly what it says. This is an example of literal language. Do you see that in these two sentences, we convey the exact same meaning? But by using figurative language in sentence one, it carries a far more emotional and passionate message. Now, sometimes we use figurative language so frequently that it becomes an almost unconscious part of our speech. Look at this as an example. Do you recognize the figurative expression used here? Have you ever heard the words, he was kicked out of the house? I don't think that anyone actually walked behind him and kicked him until he left, do you? Of course not. We understand from this expression that he was forced to leave. Think about why the phrase kicked out is more effective than forced to leave. What is interesting is that different languages, genders, racial groups and even generations develop their own figurative phrases unique to that group. These words that combine to form a specific meaning are known as idiomatic expression or the idiom of a language. An idiom is an expression that is specific to a particular language and its meaning is not clear from the meaning of the actual words. I'm going to show you two examples of idioms, one in English and one in Sesotho. You have probably heard the expression, it's raining cats and dogs. Literally, this would mean that cats and dogs are pelting down from the clouds, very problematic for the people they fall on. We know that this is an idiomatic expression, which means that it is raining heavily. Now look at the Sesutu expression, Ufata Khotso. Literally, it translates to, to dig for peace. However, this is an idiomatic expression specific to Sesutu, meaning to negotiate for peace. Can you think of instances where you can use figurative or idiomatic expressions effectively in your English studies? What about when you are required to give an interesting speech or in your creative writing assignments, poetry and essays? You have to be careful though not to use common idiomatic expressions that have lost their impact because they are used too frequently. Try and use original figurative language so that it shows that your ideas are fresh and fascinating. Now let's test your understanding of what we have learned today. On your way to school, read the newspaper banners on lampposts and traffic lights. Decide which are examples of figurative language and which are literal. I think you will be surprised to see how much figurative language is around us. Now once you have found a figurative banner, try the following. Find the article in the newspaper to which your chosen headline refers. Identify the link between the figurative headline and the literal content of the article. I hope you will now feel more confident when identifying and interpreting figurative language. In our next lesson, we will look at specific types of figurative language and how it is used in writing. 
This will help you to interpret literature and should help you with your exam preparation. Thanks for joining me and remember, a better understanding of figurative language is a feather in your cap.